So we are, today we're going to be talking about some documents from the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm just going to go through these translations and make my own comments, kind of like what I did with the uh, Recognitions of Clement, also known as the uh, Nazarene Acts. And it's also what I did with the homilies. So I think we're going to give this a shot. Um, first of all, the translation I have, Actually, I got this from, this is Robert Eisenman's translation. If you purchase this book, right now it's on Amazon, The Dead Sea Scrolls and the First Christians, Essays and Translations. You can get a used copy for three bucks. It's three dollars plus three ninety nine uh, shipping. It's a really good deal. It has three translations of uh, these documents, the Damascus document, the community rule, and um, the Habakkuk Pesher from the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it's a really good translation of, of each of them, and it's worth three bucks just for the translations. But he goes into a lot of information about James and Paul, Paul's Herodian connections. So it's a really good book by Robert Eisman especially for the, you know, three bucks. Uh, and then the, the translations are, are a bonus also. So I highly recommend picking up a copy of it used, you know, it's, it's worth the money. And so what I did was I just scanned uh, the documents, the translations into my computer uh, so we could discuss them. It's not a very good scan, but I think it's good enough to be able to read. Okay, so this is the Damascus document, and if you haven't watched enough of my videos to know, I do believe that the, that a lot of these documents, the Dead Sea Scrolls, that they were actually written by the original followers of Yeshua, that some of these documents were written by the apostles themselves, because there is um, some of the internal evidence from these documents does seem to indicate that they were written um, right before the destruction of the temple and there are a lot of parallels between characters in the Dead Sea Scrolls and Paul and James and um, and, and different uh, apostolic uh, figures. There's no names mentioned in, the, in, in these scrolls. They uh, people have nicknames or code names aliases but you don't you know it doesn't say in here and Paul did this and then James did that sort of thing so starting off with column one it says now here are you knowers of righteousness and comprehend the works of Elohim because he has a dispute with all flesh and will do judgment on all those who insult him uh, or, or blaspheme him because they rebelled when they forsook him, he hid his face from Israel and from his temple and delivered them up to the sword. But because of his memory of the covenant of the first, he left a remnant for Israel and did not deliver them up to be destroyed. Okay, so you'll see something often mentioned all through this document, the first or the covenant of the first. And if I read or spoke Hebrew enough to actually get in and see what it says, I may um, be able to share more insight, but unfortunately I can't. However, the thing that I think is interesting here, this covenant of the first. Several times you see this, um, this phraseology or it mentions the first with regards to the time in the wilderness under Moses. So the question is, is this the first covenant as in you know, the New Testament, the new covenant and the, the old covenant, uh, the covenant of the first. Now it appears that the first means forefathers according to this translation, but the Damascus document that speaks about the new covenant in the land of Damascus. So the covenant of the first would would be the first covenant that 
the word the first doesn't necessarily mean forefathers. Uh, another possible meaning to this phrase could have to do with something I've talked about before was that the Ebionites and the Nazarenes believed that Moses had given um, what I call the original Torah, the original Torah of Moses, but over time it had been corrupted by men adding in commandments to the point that it's it's hard to tell what's real and what's added. And so that that's the reason that Yeshua is recorded in extra scriptural books as saying to be um, prudent money changers so you can recognize the real from the counterfeit because the scriptures had been corrupted by the additions of men. So whether this covenant of, her, of the first means the original Torah or whether it means the first covenant as opposed to the new covenant in the land of Damascus, we're not sure. Now, one more thing, I guess this is a good time as any to mention, is that just before the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, the early believers fled Jerusalem to a place known as Pella, which was in the land of Damascus. It was on the other side, the eastern uh, side of the Jordan, um, northeast of Jerusalem. So this new covenant in the land of Damascus, I mean, Pella itself is in the land of Damascus. And this could potentially possibly be a indication of who it was that wrote this. Also, we do know that when Paul went after the uh, apostles, the early assembly, that he went to Damascus after them. So there is this association with Damascus and the early uh, believers. So, but because of his memory of the covenant of the first, he left a remnant for Israel and did not deliver them up to be destroyed. And in the era of wrath, 390 years after he delivered them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he visited them and caused a root of planting, of planting um, to grow from Israel and from Aaron, to inherit his land and to prosper on the good things of his earth. So why is there this footnote um, that this is singular? And that the reason is because that in most translations, this is made to be a plural. Because this this document speaks about this Messiah of Israel and Aaron, and it's always in the Hebrew is singular, but in most translations they pluralize it and they say the the anointed ones of Israel and Aharon, when in reality it's saying the Mashiach of Israel and Aaron, singular. So that this, you know, this Messiah, the, the title is, is one Messiah, but this Messiah is a Messiah of Israel and Aharon. So, to grow up from Israel and from Aharon, to inherit his land and to prosper on the good things of his earth. And they understood their sinfulness and knew that they were guilty men and they were like blind men and groped for the way. Now you'll see a lot of this phraseology here, the way. One of the names of the early assembly was followers of the way. They groped for the way for 20 years and Elohim considered their works because they sought him with a whole heart. Uh, this is a works-based document, much like what you see with James and Peter, as opposed to what you see with Paul, who is, uh, faith alone saves you, not your works. Because they sought him with a whole heart, and he raised up for them a teacher of righteousness to guide them in the way of his heart, and he made known to the last generations what he would do in the last generation to the congregation which this word for congregation could be assembly or, or church. So to the assembly of the traitors, those who were turners aside from the way, 
So it was speaking about someone who was in the way, because in order to turn aside from something, you have to be a member first. So there was this group of traitors. Again, to be a traitor, you have to begin with someone and then turn away from them. So there were some people who um, were members of the assembly who turned aside from following after the way. This is the time about which it is written like a straying heifer, thus did Israel stray. And when the men, the man of scoffing, the man of jesting, or the comedian arose, who poured over Israel the waters of lying, and caused them to wander astray in a trackless waste with no way, bringing low the everlasting heights, abolishing the pathways of righteousness, and removing the boundary markers which the first had marked out as their inheritance. So here you see the first is definitely uh, people. Or if it's the first covenant, you could say the first covenant marked out as their inheritance. So I guess in the midst of, <laughs> of saying that, I realized that, wait a minute, this may not necessarily even be people. Removing the boundary markers which the first covenant had marked out as their inheritance, for which reason he called down on them the curses of his covenant and delivered them up to the avenging, avenging sword of vengeance of the covenant. So again, this you know, rereading this now, I'm like, well, now I'm kind of more convinced that the first is the first covenant, and that the first is not referring to the ancestors. So, who is this comedian, this man of scoffing? I personally believe it was Paul. Uh, we, we know from the works of Epiphanius, among others, that the um, Ebionites and the Nazareans, they, they rejected Paul. They rejected uh, Paul claiming to be a disciple. And as we'll see here further, this man of, of jesting, the comedian, who's also known as the spouter of lies. It all appears to be one person. It could be two different people. But it appears that this spouter of lies also was someone who claimed to be a disciple but was not. And you know, here you see him associated with the traitors, which would again indicate someone who was a member of the party and turned away and became something else. Okay, so they he called down on them the curses of his covenant and delivered them up to the avenging sword of vengeance of the covenant. For they sought smooth things and chose illusions, watched out for breaks or loopholes, and chose the fairest neck or the easiest way. And they justified the wicked and condemned the righteous. And they transgressed the covenant and broke the law. And they banded together against the soul of the righteous one and against all the walkers in perfection, execrating their soul, or being the flesh, and they pursued them with the sword and attempted to divide, or rejoiced in the division of the people. Okay, so for okay, so seeking after smooth things. So again, we're still talking about the traitors, I believe. So the, the traders are, are seeking after the easy way out. They're looking for loopholes. Uh, again, this to me, in my mind, this is a perfect description of Paul, the way he will twist scriptures from the Tanakh in order to make it seem like the, the Torah is optional. You know, with, with Paul saying that, you know, Abraham, well, he was chosen by Elohim before he was circumcised. So it was his faith that caused him to be cho chosen, not his works. And then James comes back and says, but was not Abraham justified by his uh, works, his faith in his works? So again, it's, to me, it, it seems to be a connection. Um, many people probably disagree because you know, many people believe Paul, but I'm not one of those. So... They chose the fair's neck, and they justified the wicked and condemned the righteous. 
um, Paul was, of course, condemning. He got into this argument with Kepha in Galatians, and from that point forward, he was always kind of mocking the assembly. You can you can see that he was kind of mocking James and Kepha and, and their beliefs, and he was uh, at times very uh, sarcastic and disrespectful to them in his letters. Now. He didn't come out and name them by names in the same way that this document's not really naming names. It's just talking about this person who the people of this group obviously would know who they're talking about. Um, but in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they're not you know, calling them out by name. So, so they banded together against the nefesh of the righteous one and against all the walkers in perfection, execrating their souls. Um, and so they were dividing the people. I've also mentioned that I believe that James, that, that Paul has some role in the death of James. So if this was written after the death of James, it would make sense for them to say they banded together against the soul of the righteous one and against the walkers in perfection. Again, this, for if my theory is true, then this would be a, another association with what we see in Paul. And the wrath of Elohim was kindled against their congregation, devastating all their multitude, for their works were unclean before him. And now listen to me, all who enter the covenant, and I will unstop your ears concerning the ways of the wicked. Elohim loves knowledge and wisdom, good counsel he places before him. Uh, discernment and knowledge minister to him. He is long-suffering patience and abundant forgiveness to atone for the penitence of sin, the power, might, and overwhelming wrath with sheets of fire, which are the, which are all the angels of destruction are upon the turners aside from the way and the abominations of the law, or abominators, or blasphemers of the law. So again, you know, blasphemers or despiser of the law that to me describes Paul. Um, And so, again, you see this, you know, they're reiterating this new covenant. There shall be no remnant or survivor for them, because before the world ever was, Elohim chose them not. And before they were established, he knew their works and abominated their generations on account of blood. This is something that uh, you, you see in the uh, book of Acts. You know, we have these laws that are given by James, this decision that the uh, Gentiles coming to the understanding of Torah were to abstain from certain things. You know, meat sacrificed to idols, things strangled from blood, and fornication. You know, all this is about you know, dietary restrictions and sexual um, restrictions. Essentially, a lot of it has to do with staying away from idols. You know, if you were to go to eat meat in the ancient Near East, you would go to a pagan temple and you would eat part of the sacrifices. Uh, or you would buy that sacrificed meat in the, in the marketplace. And so that was something that, of course, the assembly was against. Paul, on the other hand, said, you know, go ahead and eat whatever, don't even ask a question about it. So this, on account of blood, and hid his face from the earth until they were consumed, for he knew the years of their standing. Again, this association with the standing one from um, the Nazarene Acts. The standing and the number of precise determination of their eras for all eternal being and essences until that which would come in their eras for all the years of eternity. And in all of them he raised up for himself men called by name, so that a remnant might remain in the land, and fill the face of the earth with their seed. And he made known to them by the hand of his Messiah his Holy Spirit. So what do we, what do we see in the Gospels? We see Messiah giving the Holy Spirit. So he made known to them 
there should probably be a comma here. He made known to them, comma, by the hand of his Messiah, comma, his Holy Spirit. And he is true, and in the explanation of his name, their names are to be found. So this is itself. Any translate, most translations you get, like if you were to go out and buy a translation of the Dead Sea Scrolls, it will say his anointed ones. But again, Robert Eisman points out that this is singular. This is not a anointed ones. This is Messiah, Mashiach. Um, and those whom he hated he led astray and now my sons listen to me and I shall uncover your eyes so that you may see and understand the works of Elohim so you know this right here is think about all the times in the scripture that there's this referring to eyes to see and ears to hear so here he's saying I shall uncover your eyes so that you may see and understand the works of Elohim, so that you may choose that which pleases him and rejects that which he hates, in order that you may walk in perfection in all his ways and not follow after the thoughts of a sinful imagination or fornicating eyes. Because many have gone astray in these things, and mighty warriors stumbled in them from ancient times until now, because they walked in the stubbornness of their heart. The watchers of heaven fell and were caught in them because they did not keep the commandments of Elohim. And their sons, whose height was like the height of cedars, and whose bodies were like mountains, also fell. All flesh, which was on dry land, also perished, and they were as if they had never been. This right here, every time I read this, it reminds me of Jude. Um, describing the, the Nephilim. And in their doing, according to their own will, they did not keep the commandments of their Maker. Therefore his wrath was kindled against them, in these things, the sons of Noah, together with their families, went astray. And because of them, they were cut off. Okay, so the sons of Noah, they were cut off. But Abraham did not walk in them. And he was made a friend of Elohim because he kept the commandments of Elohim and did not choose the will of his own spirit. Um, this is also reiterated by James in James 2.21-23. And he transmitted them to Isaac and Jacob, and they kept them, and were described as friends of Elohim, and the heirs of the covenant forever. So, so again, you see this kind of parallel between choosing your, your own way, and then you have um, choosing to keep the commandments of Elohim. The sons of Jacob strayed in them, uh, the commandments, and were punished according to their errors. And their sons walked in the stubbornness of their heart in Egypt, complaining against the commandments of Elohim, each man doing what was right in his own eyes. And they ate blood, and their males were cut off in the wilderness. So again, you see this reference to eating blood, which uh, James uh, spoke against in the book of Acts. He spoke to them in the wilderness of Kadesh, Go up and possess the land. But they did according to their own spirit, and did not listen to the voice of their maker, the commandments of their teachers, but rather murmured in their tents. And the wrath of Elohim was kindled against their assembly, and their sons perished. And because of it their kings were cut off, and because of it their mighty ones perished, and because of it their land became desolate. Because of it the members of the covenant of the first sinned and were delivered up. So again, now here's the thing. This is why I don't think that this first is forefathers. Because the members of the covenant of the first, well, wouldn't that be the forefathers? Wouldn't the forefathers be the members? And so, because of it, the members of the first covenant sinned and were delivered up to the sword because they deserted the covenant of Elohim and chose their own will, following after the stubbornness of their hearts, each man doing according to his own will. But as for those who held fast to the commandments of Elohim, those who remained of them, Elohim established his covenant with Israel forever, revealing to them the hidden things concerning which all Israel went astray. And he opened for them his holy Sabbaths and his glorious festivals, the testimonies of his righteousness and the ways of his truth 
and the wishes of his will, which man must do in order to live through them. So you see this um, um, revealing the testimonies of his righteousness. And as I read this, it reminds me of this belief that the uh, Essenes had was that everything that that nothing could be ascribed to Elohim that was in any way negative. Like everything about Yahuwah was righteous. So you see, the Essenes had that belief according to uh, Josephus and according to the Nazarene Acts. The Nazarenes also had that same belief, which is another reason I think that these are the same group. Um, so the testimonies of his righteousness, now notice this has to be revealed. His righteousness had to be revealed in the ways of his truth and the wishes of his will, which a man, which the Adam, possibly a reference to the primal Adam doctrine uh, of the Nazarenes. And they did, dug a well which, rich in waters, but those rejected them shall not live. But they immersed themselves or wall wallowed in punishable sin in the ways of uncleanness. And they say that th that it is ours. But Elohim and his marvelous mysteries atone for their sin and forgave their iniquities. So you got, again, you got two groups. You have this one group, the righteous group, that's digging a, a well rich in waters. And then you got this other group, which is wallowing in um, punishable sin and, and uncleanness, which, again, to me, this speaks of, of Paul. And his doing away with the Torah. You now, both of these groups were teaching water baptism, but one of them was teaching, uh, the Nazarenes were teaching water baptism for purification, and then you remained clean after you were purified. Whereas with Paul, it was you were getting baptized into this covenant, and then you could just live however you wanted to, because all you had to have was faith. And he built for them a house of faith in Israel, the likes of which has never stood from ancient times until now. And for them that hold fast to it, there will be a victorious life, and all the glory of Adam will be theirs. Uh, again, as this footnote says, the Ebionite primal Adam ideology, which Elohim established for them by the hand of the prophet Ezekiel, saying, The priests and the Levites. The sons of Zadok who kept the service of the temple when the sons of Israel strayed from me will offer me the fat and the blood. The priests are the penitents of Israel who went out from the land of Judah and the joiners with them um, and the sons of Zadok are the elect of Israel called by name who will stand up. Again, this is standing one doctrine in the last days. Behold, this is the exact exposition of their names according to their generations and the eras of their standing, and the number of their trials, and the years of their existence, and the precise exposition of their works. They are the first men of holiness whom Elohim made atonement, or through whom Elohim made atonement. And they justify the righteous and condemn the wicked, and all those coming after them are to do according to the precise letter of the Torah, which the first transmitted until the completion of the era of these years. Um, so again, you see this Torah of the first. Um, so would this be the first people or the first covenant? According to the precise letter of the Torah, which the first covenant transmitted until the completion of the era of these years, according to the covenant which Elohim made with the first to atone for or forgive their sins, so too would Elohim make atonement for or through them. So this seems this sentence seems to indicate that it, it means the ancestors. So I guess it's kind of up for debate as to what's meant there. Um, justifying the righteous, condemning the wicked, as opposed to the uh, the the traitors who would condemn the righteous and justify the wicked. So. Again, you got these two groups, um, and we see that today. You know, if, if you speak out against someone for unrighteousness or, or wickedness, um, 
you know, generally be condemned by a lot of people. And so even I was actually kind of surprised recently. We had a, an issue. I made a, a video about it. Just speaking out against something that you would think would be universally rejected by all believers, like witchcraft. I broke fellowship with people because of some people in the group were embracing witchcraft and, and claiming to be witches and wizards. And the other people in the group were just like, okay, well, you know, to each their own. And me and a couple other people were like, no, man, this, is, this isn't right. We're, and so we sounded the alarm more or less and got ridiculed and rejected and told off. And so finally we, we left this group. And, um, and since then there's been several you know, people attacking us on social media over it. And it's like, well, we're not going to justify the wicked. And so that's what this is talking about. Justifying the righteous and condemning the wicked. And then there's a group of traitors which will do the opposite. You know, they will justify the wicked and condemn the righteous. So this hasn't ended. You know, it's still continuing to this day. Uh, so we're already 30 minutes into this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. We'll make a, a part two and maybe a part three also. So come back for part two if you're interested.